Today we're going to talk a bit about the uh, big muon G-2 experiment that's been uh, making huge waves everywhere. Um, so firstly I want to explain a little bit about like what this experiment means uh, because actually uh, none of us are really uh, experts we actually normally do quantum information so but you know it's all quantum. Firstly I have to explain what uh, like a magnetic moment actually is right so a uh, magnetic moment is uh, basically defined as the amount of torque that uh, a magnet would experience in a magnetic field. So, of course, you know, we're all familiar if you put a compass in a magnetic field, then it will turn, right? So, uh, there will be a torque. So, the way that it's uh, defined classically is uh, according to, so mu is the magnetic moment. And so it's current times the area. So this sort of makes sense because, you know, the more current, the, the stronger your magnet is and uh, the larger your area. Of course, if your area goes to zero, then it's not a, not a magnet anymore. Right? Okay, so that's how it's defined. And then uh, now let's think about like what the magnetic moment of something like uh, an atom would be. We can just plug in things like the uh, area um, of this electron that's going around. Um, and the current would be like the electric, electronic charge multiplied by the, the velocity. The perimeter of this uh, orbit would be 2 pi r. And then if you plug that into there, then uh, you get the magnetic moment. Um, and then we have to do a bit of a sleight of hand where we uh, change to angular momentum um, and that introduces this factor of uh, h-bar and, and this is what it would be for like a, you know, like a classical uh, orbiting uh, electron. To actually do a quantum mechanical calculation, then it, it is not actually equal to e h-bar over 2m. Um, there is this factor of this gyromagnetic ratio, which is, uh, you know, basically, uh, you can see that, you know, this calculation uh, is just the order of magnitude kind of estimate. So, if you do a real quantum mechanical calculation, then it turns out to be uh, 2. But um, if you actually do an even more accurate measurement, then it turns out to be something uh, a little bit away from uh, 2. Right? So this was first done for the electron in like 1948 and then they found that um, it's uh, you know, a little bit above 2. And why is it above 2? Uh, it's basically because um, there are these so-called quantum fluctuations. So an electron has some kind of uh, probability that it can turn into a photon. Um, and and then come back into an electron. So uh, that's basically, this is called the one photon correction and Schwinger was the guy that um, originally found uh, or explained this phenomenon. But actually for the muon, there's like all kinds of other uh, effects like the photon can turn into some other particles like these hadrons um, and, um, and this can give like further corrections. Right? Uh, just to give you a bit of a simple example of what it basically means is to have quantum fluctuations. So imagine you have this like spin model where say all the spins are down in a particular chain and then you have some small term which is like a, uh, you know, like a perturbation on that. Right? Um, then if you diagonalize like the, the sigma z part of this then you'll get like a ground state which is like all spins in the zero state and then uh, if you include the x then you'll have perturbation of this extra term right so what you call all this extra stuff there that you, you see um, that's a superposition of the on top of the stuff that you would otherwise have you know this is basically called quantum fluctuations right? Basically, in this in this case, it's just a more complicated version of that. But you have uh, you know small terms which basically take you away from uh, the state which you would you know ordinarily think. So when you say vacuum, it's not really the state where there's nothing. Actually, there's there's like some other extra 
states which are in a superposition on top of that and that gives uh, so-called quantum fluctuations. And um, so uh, the state with nothing would be like the ground state, but then the state with like a particle are actually like the excited state. So like, for example, the, the muon or an electron that's like floating around would be like one of these excited states. And uh, the fact that there's like extra terms there um, are these sort of quantum fluctuations. The experiments that they're doing now are on the muon, which is like, one of these fundamental particles. And so the electron is, you know, th that's what we talked about, that was done in, you know, 1948. But the muon, uh, people are doing more experiments on it. It's interesting because this has like a heavier mass. And so the heavier the mass, it actually includes like more and more like complicated effects that uh, might arise from like QCD and other effects which you don't really see in the electrons. The way that they do this experiment is like they, you know, they shoot the muon into this ring, it goes around and um, uh, the spin of the, the muon sort of precesses and, and remember, you know, this is measuring basically the response of like the, the spin to a magnetic field. So, the, you know, how much it precesses is sort of what you are trying to measure, and then eventually you, you measure the amount of uh, precession um, uh, after it converts or decays into an electron into a detector. Um, so people already knew that in 2001 that um, it was looking a bit suspicious that um, you know theory was a bit different to experiment. So uh, there's the theory and the experiment calculation. Um, and you can see like there's a small difference in like the uh, eighth decimal place. What the next generation of experiments are doing now is basically to basically come, uh, you know, basically make a much more precise prediction. So this A thing is uh, just defined over here, so it's just like the difference from two. So, you know, you subtract two from <coughs> G and then okay, divide by two. And so these are the latest results. So, um, so basically the results are still showing some quite a big difference to the uh, standard model prediction. Uh, so called, uh, well, so it's 4.2 standard deviations different, um, which is kind of uh, still quite a, quite a lot. Um, and then there's some latest paper that's come out now that's um, uh, showing actually that maybe it's not quite so big, but then there's still some, some difference. And so all these are different theory works, uh, like the green and the red are all the different theory kind of approaches. So there's lots of different theory calculations going on to, to calculate this, but uh, I think there's still a kind of consensus that there's difference to the experiment. So that's it. So even with the new Nature paper, that still doesn't rule out the possibility that it's different? Seems from? like, yeah. So they, in the paper they say 3.7 standard deviations. Mm -hmm. yeah. And actually I don't know the difference to, of, of this, well of all these approaches to what was claimed over here. So this, this is the Fermilab you know, um, announcement. And they said 4.2 sigma. So I think there are some, you know, different sort of theoretical uh, techniques Ways that to are, calculate. Yeah, yeah. like uh, I think particularly. So the title of this paper is like, um, you know, uh, it's the so it's the corrections due to lattice QCD. Right. right. So there's some like QCD effects mm. which are um, included in in these works, which. Um, uh, Maybe, you know, the, the 4.2 sigma is maybe, I don't know, it's only partially included right. or it's using a different technique or something like that. Yeah. So what would this result mean for the standard model? Uh, that it's, you know, I guess that it's... Uh, Why is it there, there's something something missing, right? Yeah. Right. So that's what's so exciting, right? Hmm. Yeah. So, and FEMILA will be saying that in their next round of iteration, maybe their, their standard deviation might, you know, they'll be more, much more precise, so mm. the error will reduce more.
Yeah, that's, that's, that's the idea to yeah. get, get this down yeah, even exactly. further. Yeah. So, yes. but even at that, I don't think he makes it correct, right? Because the standard model is around 18, right? And this one is a, a, on the other side, 20. Uh, what, which one correct? The experiment? No, no, the, the, the standard model prediction is what I'm saying. Yeah. The, the experiment seems to be within the same, mm. maybe the same um, yes. error margin. It, it, because if you look at the lower end of Brook, Brooklyn, Brookhaven result, mm. I think it covers the average ex average experiment and even the Fermi result. You know, yeah. the, the location of the red dot. So I think the experimental results are within the same error margin. But the standard model is really off. Well, it's not off. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, it is off, of course, mm. yes. <laughs> but uh, it's like, you know, so there's some, you know, there's basically theory and experiment, right? Yeah. So, you know, there's either something wrong with the theory, something missing in the theory. Okay. Yeah. Or, of course, the experiment could be wrong, but of course we never doubt the experimentalist. Experimentalist is <laughs> always right. Yeah. Or both are wrong. <laughs> yes, or both, both, both are wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But these QCD calculations, quantum mm -hmm. chromodynamics, yeah. Uh, the lattice gauge simulations, what exactly do, do they really do? They, they include more parameters or more theories? They throw in more things or they remove? Is it, is it just adding more complex Feynman diagrams? You just like add more and more branched out terms? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure because, you know, I haven't properly read the paper, but I imagine from, you know, the thing with uh, QCD mm -hmm. is that um, it's, you know, like the name suggests, it's like strong interactions. And um, that kind of means actually you can't use perturbation theory anymore. Right. And so for like the old calculations um, where, you know, uh, the for the electron, um, they could use like QED, mm -hmm. quantum electrodynamics. And quantum electrodynamics, it so happens, the parameters are like small enough so that right. you can just use perturbation theory. So, you know, like in, in my kind of toy example here, um, you know, if X is like super small, you can use perturbation theory and it's like super mm -hmm. accurate, right? But for strong interactions, this X is kind of not so small. So that's why they have to kind of use more like numerical methods. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe effectively, I think it's like what you're saying, like to include more Feynman diagrams, but maybe the techniques are somewhat different right. because you're doing more like, you know, Monte Carlo type simulation. So how would a new particle that uh, accounts for this difference, where would that fit into the standard model? Are there proposed already yeah. ideas? That probably, could, yeah. yeah, there's probably all kinds of weird and wonderful theories. And yeah. so. I suppose, you know, if you said, oh, you know, hey, there's an, another particle here that we didn't take into account, mm. and then there's, you know, some other perturbative effects of that, and then maybe that accounts for it, you know, who knows? I, right. think, I think nobody knows at this point. There's no, like, strong leading candidate to take credit yeah, for. I, I don't know. Um, not, don't know, really, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe someone could let us know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe somebody on YouTube will solve this problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and publish it under this video. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye. Bye. -bye. bye.